It's too pretty. They don't sell this design anymore. I have no ideas on how to use it. There are so many reasons to accumulate pattern paper. And as valid as this may sound, the result is a growing stash that occupies more and more space for no good reason. I am guilty of this myself, but there's actually a lot of ways in which you can use pattern paper. Let's start with cards. You can use pattern paper to create quick card backgrounds that already have a lot of interest. Having pattern paper on your card base allows you to spend a little bit less time on your focal panel because you don't need a ton of detail and you still end up with something that looks really fun. You can also use pattern paper on your whole card design and when I do this I like to look for card sketches online. I tend not to mix papers from different collections and I instead take advantage of the fact that those patterns and those colors were designed to work together in the first place. I also try to keep the busier designs on the card base and the less busy ones on the card front because this creates a little bit of a cleaner look that I personally prefer. All you need then are a couple of focal images, a sentiment and your card is good to go. Speaking of sentiments, if you use dice for those you can totally die cut them out of pattern paper. Large sentiment dice or large alphabet dice will allow you to showcase your paper the most because simply you have more surface for your designs to shine. And with the large sentiment, there isn't a whole lot you need to add to your card. So the whole card making process is gonna be fast, but the results are gonna be super cute. Another fun way is to use pattern papers in your cards is to use them in your scenes. All I do is I find papers that have colors that are similar to the ones of the elements I need for my scene, in this case the beach, the ocean waves and the sky. For this I like to use papers that are not too busy and I also like to add a little bit of dimension with some ink blending on the edges of the design. But whether you take this extra step or not, this is a really fun way to create scene cards and it also uses up a good amount of pattern paper. Because I don't know about you, but I need to reduce that stash. Paper piecing is another option, but I rarely use it if I'm honest. It's a little bit more fiddly than what I've shown so far and I'm not a patient crafter. But having said that, the results are cute and if you are one of those crafters who likes fussy cutting, this is definitely something to try out. To make the results a bit more cohesive with the rest of the card, I like to run a marker along the edges of the cut piece and I also like to add some shading with my markers to create the same dimension that I have on the rest of the image. For this card, I kept the rest of the design pretty simple with a quick ink blended cloudy sky and a sentiment that I stamped directly on the card base. You can add extra detail with a glitter pen and some glossy accents which in this case fit perfectly with the hot air balloon. If you're working on one of those extra special cards, you can even use pattern paper to decorate your envelope. If you're using 12x12 sheets, you can create the envelope itself out of pattern paper, but for 6x6 sheets, they're just not big enough for an A2 envelope. And whether you create your own envelope or use a store-bought one, you can definitely use pattern paper to decorate it and to create some fun elements on the outside as well. And if you match the pattern paper on your envelope to the one you used on your card, the result is gonna be even more special. Granted, this envelope is definitely not one of the prettiest things that has come out of this room, but you get the idea, right? Another great and pretty satisfying way to use pattern paper is to tear it into pieces. Don't be scared, pattern paper doesn't feel any pain and if you adhere it to your art journal pages you can create some really cool backgrounds. For this page right here I collaged some torn pattern paper pieces and primed the paper with some thinned out gesso. I'm still retaining some of the detail of the pattern paper designs at this point, but I'm gonna end up losing all of it once I go ahead and use my acrylic paints on this background. If you wanna retain some of your pattern paper designs, you can do the same thing, but use sprays like distress ink sprays instead. 
or just do what I do and use the pattern papers you really don't like because it's still gonna give you some really good texture but you don't have to look at those designs. I used pattern paper also for my die cut grass heels here on my design and I primed it with some clear gesso and added some more texture to it by dabbing acrylic paints on top with a paper towel. And this way I can still see some of the original pattern paper under the layers that I added. Oh, and do you see this gorgeous image right here? It's one example of those underrated stamps that lots of crafters are missing out on and that I talk about in this playlist right here. Make sure to click and watch and give it a go because there's many crafting possibilities you may not be taking advantage of.